kids and welcome to the Harmony Rigging Does Tutorial Guide to Rigging. <laughs> Today's mouth day. I finally got something put together. Let me talk a little bit about mouse. I have this scary monster whose face is exploding and I've got my little elfy sort of girl who we've done before. So I'll start with the head that we rigged previously. In this case, when we went to the left, what we did in the other video, let me just go to my mouth, is I used the squishy, super squishy one and put my mouth on that because that was the one that it was naturally going to be because it's on the left side of the face. But if you do have to put a mouth chart in on the side and you don't always, a lot of shows don't put in side mouth charts because profiles kind of look weird in really stylized cartoons but if you do need to put a mouse chart on the side it might serve your purposes a little better to use this like the less stretchy mouth so that your stuff isn't as distorted because you are going to need drawing substitutions in there in this case because we have a left and a right jaw separated you can just go ahead and throw your mouths in there and do drawing substitution for the chin so all of this is on the same drawing it's just a cloned version of the drawing and they're coming out through separate layer selectors. This jaw's on the color art, this one's on the underlay art. The points are all set up in sensible location and they share a center peg. So in this situation, all you gotta do is slap your mouth substitutions in there. No problem. Okay, the next mouth I'm gonna talk about is if you decide to do deformer chin, because that does require a little bit additional work. And we can also look at breaking this mouth up even more. So if you use a deformer chin, here we have two pieces of chin, so we're taking up the color and underlay layers. If we use a deformer chin, one of the advantages is that we can keep all of the chins on the color art or the underlay art, wherever we decide to put it. And then you've got a little Little bit you've got one extra place where you can break the mouth up a little bit more so it's not unusual nowadays to see lower lips and stuff broken up from the face and then you can have the teeth and the inside of the mouth or even a tongue on a separate layer and you can have the upper mouth and animators of course because they just love it so much they'll just throw deformers on here so you can throw a little lip deformer on there and try and work out a snarl which never looks as nice as drawing, so just draw it. Why do people hate drawing nowadays? Yeah, you've got kind of a snarl going because you see this deformer in here. So convenient for your speedy animations. Lower lip, you can do the same thing. Throw deformers on there. You can stretchy squish it. Down here on this character who has no face, there we go. The mouth is able to be broken up a little bit more. I've included the inside of the mouth on the top teeth layer because the top teeth don't move. They're fixed to your skull, so no matter what you do with your face, your teeth don't move in relation to like the this part of your face. So I feel it's fine to put the, the mouth in there. And then you've got your lower teeth, so you can go, nah. And you could even throw a tongue in there. That's super cool. So let's just throw a deformer in here, and we'll go along together and add a deformer. So if you're using a deformer, you have the same drawing all the way around. So here's my front view. This is the view that I consider my zero. So I'm going to throw my mouth in there. I'm going to add a deformer, go to my menu, make an envelope deformer. If you have an older version of Harmony and you can't use envelope deformers, one little hack you can do is just start your chain up here like this and then go all the way around like that. You can add in as many points as you want. But because you've got your anchor point way up at the top there, it's going to act just like an envelope deformer without actually having one. You can't actually join these up, but you'll have more ability to move these this part of the thing, and this can stay up here and just kind of keep it out of the way. That's one thing that was done before envelope deformers actually existed. One thing I want to note is that I'm not going to use my add stuff button because we're going to have a lot of drawing substitutions on this and using a switch and having to put in say 25 or 35 or 45 different drawings on the substitution list is a little bit of a pain in the butt that we don't need. Oh, and one viewer gave me a cool note that you can hold alt while you put your last little dude in here and it'll automatically close the envelope without having to go into your curves. So that's super convenient. Thank you, viewer. I don't remember who it was. Okay, so that looks pretty good. It doesn't need to be perfect because this is just demonstrational purposes. Now I'm going to put a keyframe on my front. I usually forget to do, but I'm going to put a keyframe on my front and I also have all my drawings of my mouse lined up along the way. So I'm gonna find my front here. Oh, it seems like my front is just there, so my keyframe's fine. There, now I'm going to come over here 
and I'm going to have to use my top peg of the mouse to animate it if I need to. So I like to just line up my pivot point here or line up the chin, whichever one you feel like is the best option for you really. And then you just use your deformers to match the artwork for the three quarter view. Quick job, but you spend as much time as you need to to make sure that your artwork is exactly lined up with your next one. And then you move over here and you do your side view. So the side view, it might be easier or harder if you're using a deformer. It's, it's hard to say. <laughs> it depends on the style of artwork that you're using. You might actually need a drawing substitution to get some of these big curves. Add this part and this part here as part of your mouth substitution on the actual lip part. That's another option. So this part I'm, I feel like needs to go in the lip just because I'd have to add another deformer point in there to get it working properly. So I'm just going to throw this on my lip drawing layer my lip now i've got these lips on a whole pile of different layers so you want to make sure to put it on the lower lip and we'd have to go through all our drawing substitutions and make sure that that was on there and uh it's close enough i think it's a little bit pointier but it's fine so now we take this side and we find our side mouths boop and we paste that keyframe on here and we take our three quarter and we find where that starts cool schmoosh and we paste in our three quarter. So now our keyframes all match. And now the thing about deformer mouse, this is super convenient. You're like, oh, now if I need to do something with the jaw, I can just change it up. But the problem comes along when we need to do these substitutions and the chin is moving because we can't use the deformer to do that. So you'd think you could just animate the deformer and go through the mouth chart and make sure that the chin was lying up. But when you change the drawing substitution, it's not going to change the animation on the deformer as well. So if you want this to be user friendly and the animators can just switch through the drawing substitutions and the mouth will look right, you actually have to go in and adjust the art on every single one of these layers. So usually you'll get from the design team, you'll get something like this, a head with the mouth that's working and the jaw is all working and you know, whatever shape it's supposed to be when the mouth is open. That chin should probably be farther to the left. Mirror, that perspective, Tracy. So what we wanna do is go through each drawing substitution. And this part is really tedious and boring. <laughs> this one's closed, chin is fine. Here the mouth is open. So we go into wherever our mouth is, here it's there. We adjust the art using drawing tools and then we check it with the once the animation is on because now the deformer is not lined up with the face. So you can see the deformer is a little bit higher and for the most part it won't cause too many problems in the really open mouths it might look a little bit wonky but there's no other way to make sure that the drawing substitutions change and the artwork is lined up. Okay, so th the front view, you're like, okay, that doesn't look too bad, but now we're gonna go to the three quarter view and you can see inside your mouth, there's a hole. So when we wanna change this one, we have to change the front artwork to try and match it to the new deformer. So I can open it a little bit like that and you can see there's a slight delay and I have to check, click and 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 check. Click and check. Click a check, click a check. For every single mouth. And you want to make sure to get it as close as humanly possible despite the deformation that's already happening on the chin. Because when the drawing substitutions change, if they're all jacked up, it's going to look bad. So this is one of the most tedious parts about deformer rigging. If you're working on something where they're like, oh man, we need every single thing to have a deformer on it. Here you've got the side mouth. So let's say it opens wide like this. Now we're have to gonna go through and you can see how much it's distorting as I'm moving it and try and get it to line up as best you can. This can take a while. I'm not gonna make you watch me, but this, this is actually how, how you do it when you have these deformed mouths. And it's really annoying and tedious. You may need to put in drawing substitutions. Sometimes it'll work really simply. This one doesn't seem to want to have this working very well at all and then because these are drawing substitutions you can erase the part that's in the mouth you just have to find it so here we could actually erase all the way back to there so you don't get that ugly mess do some more of this get rid of all that extra mouth i probably shouldn't have got rid of this much up here <laughs> because of the complexity i feel like all of this is going to have to get put on this mouth 
So that's when you use the art mouth and you cut off this part so we find exactly where this part of the mouth is. So this part here would have to go on the upper lip and then this part, as much as you need to, you'd have to put it on the bottom lip part of this to get it to clean up exactly how you want it because it has to look like the art that you're given from the art department. It can't look like some sort of jacked up thing with holes in it and weird sticky outy bits. <laughs> Adjust as much as you can using the artwork and for the front view, like I said, you're not going to have much problem. If you, I didn't go super wide with this one, but if you get the really wide ones, you might have a little bit more trouble, but for the most part, the front's going to work out okay. The three quarter has a, like, a little bit more difficult to get it working exactly how you want it to. But still, this, for this design in particular, it's not too hard. And it's not too bad. It's working okay. And then the side view. I've had some rigs where it works really well and you can just adjust the artwork a little bit. But in this case, the distortion is just too much to get it working. And you have to use those drawing substitutions to put in overlays on top of this jaw. So then you might have problems when you're going from the side to the three-quarter view. But I mean, even when we were just rigging up the fancy face in the first place, you saw that there's always a little bit of a problem between side and three quarter. It's impossible to make this 3D guy, so why do this? Why is it so popular to try and turn this into 3D? If there's more questions on that, just ask. I'm not going to do every single mouth because I, I don't think you need me to do that. <laughs> that should be clear. This mouth, I'm going to show you an example of using the color overrides. There are a few guys out there who've done tutorials. Q Bum Lee, I'll link his down below because his is the the oldest that I know of. I think he was the first guy to post something like that. He does it this way and and he's super skilled so you should follow him if you don't already. Although he hasn't posted in a while, he still keeps his blog updated of his artwork. Okay, so the lips are on the overlay and this is sort of the way Fish Hooks does it if you've ever seen that show. If you haven't, you should watch it just for the mouths because they're so good. We'll do our green screen and on I'll show you my drawings here so you can see. So this is the overlay. This is the line art, top teeth and the mouth. The color art are these bottom teeth and the underlay I left free in case I wanted to put a tongue in there. All right, so now you've got this scary thing like this and we're gonna plug an over color override in there. Yeah, I totally named something useful. Okay, so we're gonna take this green screen and I want to pop it over into this box. So up here is palette junk and down here is specific color junk. So I grab the palette that I want, which is fish head, I think I called it. And I grabbed the green screen color and I put it over in the individual color override box because I want to change something specific about this. And now instead of new RGBA, I can click this menu and it gives you tons of different stuff you can do. I'm just going to click color not visible, the second one in the group. And now you're not going to be able to see it, but it's still there. So this is a way of getting ar around the problem of only having four layers because ideally there'd be more layers and I could just put that on another one but we're also we want to manipulate it with this layer as well so it's nice to keep that on the same layer for that reason and then we can pull in another color override boop and you have to plug it into your dealie to actually see what the palette options are so last one in the list this one now instead of individual color overrides I'm going to render selected colors only I don't know why they made a whole separate box for this I mean it, it might just be legacy from from older things. I don't know why they didn't just put it in here, but I want to render the selected colors and I'm going to select the green screen green by pooping it, just pushing it over using this guy here. You want to apply this on everything that's coming out of the box and close. So now this is only pooping out the green screen color. We can actually plug it in above here or below here. I'm just going to plug it in below just because it's neater. And now I want these teeth in the inside of the mouth. I'm going to put them on their own composite and I'm going to use a cutter to cut them but I want it to be an inverted cutter because I want everything to stay inside the green screen. So now when I change this I can change the lips and of course let's add a deformer because everything is deformers. So now uh, we can adjust the lips whatever we want we can do that or we can go whoa and then uh a big smile like this. Yay! I'm so happy, guys. Now, right now I have an underbite because I've included the mouth color on the back of these teeth. So if I were to switch the teeth around, it's hidden behind the mouth. So we could use another color override here to separate those two things. Boop. So that's the top teeth. And now we're going to go color not visible and another color override. 
and go down here again and take this color, rendered select colors only, render select colors, apply to everything, and we can just move the color R back. We don't need it to cut anything, we just want it to be behind the other teeth. So now his underbite is corrected. And if you want to, for funsies, we'll see where this curve is there, curve one. So I'm gonna separate curve one out of the pack there and put it out through the multiport out and use my kinematic output because I don't want this to warp anything. Switch, go past the switch. And again, the switch is optional. In this case, I am going to keep the switch because we're not using a lot of drawing substitution. If you want to close mouth, that's going to need a substitution. Um, or if it gets, if you really want to twist it, you might need to do something about that. So I'm going to leave the switch in because I want that option, but I'm going to also, in this case, just for fun, I want to attach the mouth so that when I open the mouth, oh my God, so we can uh, bring our teeth way down here. We can go, oh. This is a super fun mouth for really cartoony stuff. Yay, he's so happy. So definitely play around with this idea of throwing the deformers in there and just having like a big goofy fish hooks mouth. Watch fish hooks. Just go and look at it. I don't even know what this show's about. I just mute it and I just watch their mouths because they're so cool. I think there are other shows that do this sort of thing too, but it's like cool Wallace and Gromit style. Thanks for watching, you guys. The forms are cool, I get it. <laughs> All right, so hopefully that's giving you some fun ideas to play around with mouths. There are probably tons more ways to go about it. Even just drawing substitutions are fine. You can draw whatever you want. Animation's magic, you guys. But for these kind of studio heads, those are the two ways to go about it. And then you can go anywhere from this like really tedious stuff to like having like a crazy fun deformer mouth with like teeth attached. So go have fun, do some mouth stuff. If anybody's made something or rigged something using any of my tutorials, please send me a link or something. I wanna see what you guys are doing. If any of this is helping make your animation a little better get a little faster. I don't have anything else on my rigging to-do list. I'm gonna go back and just see what I've done and see if there's anything that pops into my head that I haven't covered. Oh, I might go over stuff like the mesh warp, some of the different defor uh, modules. I'll, I'll just go through and see which modules are kind of fun to talk about, but I don't have a lot more rigging stuff. There's the various chunks of character you're gonna come across and some various ways to approach them. If there's anything I missed or something you specifically want help with, please let me know. Leave a comment or message me or Twitter, any of those things. I'm on all the things. I'm going to start moving into some effects and animation and other stuff, compositing. I don't even know yet. I don't have plans. And I might do some more rant videos because that was super fun, the, the one I did the other day. All right. So please like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be a surprise to even me. All of us. We're all going to be surprised. Bye.